gluten-free menus free from aisles. To your average person, these are a somewhat alien concept. But what's life like for someone who has to eat grainy bread and pay an average of four times the price for it? It really does bring fear onto you when you know the consequences that if you don't follow the gluten-free diet, what could happen. I really do struggle with it. This is just unfair and I've got to live with this forever. Join me, Aaron Mayhew, as I take you on a gluten-free journey finding out what celiac disease is, why you might have it without knowing, and what the future holds for the condition. When I was 17 years old and doing my A-levels, I was diagnosed with celiac disease. I'd lived a normal life up to that point, but I began to feel sick several times a week. It was a confusing and worrying time. I'd never heard of celiac disease, and I was suddenly told that I needed to stop eating gluten. So I did some research, and I soon learned that gluten is a protein found in wheat, barley, spelt, and rye. That meant I had to stop eating foods which contained gluten, like bread, cake, pasta, and pizza. Yes, all the nice things. Even beer was suddenly a no-go, as I had to find gluten-free alternatives to everything I liked, and I soon became very familiar with checking labels. But I want to know, what actually is celiac disease and why do I have it? Wheat is biologically new to humankind because we... Professor David Sanders is a gastroenterologist. That's someone who looks at the health of our digestive system. Professor Sanders is internationally recognised for his work in celiac disease and told me what happens in my body when I eat gluten. Our own immune system identified gluten, which is a component of wheat, as something that it didn't like, thought was foreign when it entered our gut, and that reacts and causes an immune response. And the immune response is one of producing antibodies, but also locally an inflammation, which destroys the lining of the small bowel. So celiac disease is an autoimmune condition where the immune system attacks its own body. And Professor Sanders told me that makes my condition tough to treat. With the body almost malfunctioning, the only treatment at the moment is a strict, lifelong gluten-free diet. If I was to stray away from this diet, I'd be physically sick fairly soon after. But not every celiac reacts in the same way. Things just seem to change quite quickly. Charlotte um, Bailey is a 24-year-old celiac who lives in Newcastle. She suffered from weight loss, constipation and fatigue before her diagnosis as a teenager. And Charlotte says there was no relief in finding out why she had these symptoms. I really didn't handle it very well. I was 16 and I was like, how can I just eat gluten-free? Like, how, how can I just accept that? But I'm not gonna be normal. All my friends can eat normal stuff at lunchtime. Like, what am I gonna do? And it just felt really overwhelming from the start. And other symptoms can exist too. <laughs> Diarrhea, bloating, brain fog, even no symptoms at all. Celiac disease can present itself in such a range of ways that the world has a diagnosis problem. In fact, in the UK it takes an average of 13 years for a celiac to get diagnosed. Celiac UK is a national charity for the gluten-free community and they work to improve life for celiacs in the UK. The charity's director of membership, Annette Woolman, told me that underdiagnosis is linked to awareness. Underdiagnosis is a big problem and research suggests that in the UK there are half a million people that are experiencing symptoms but are not yet diagnosed with celiac disease. One in four people diagnosed with celiac disease have previously been misdiagnosed with IBS. We've raised awareness around what the symptoms are and what are associated with celiac disease. So it takes an average of over a decade to diagnose celiac disease. But as Annette Woolman told me, a lot of people may not even know they have it. In the UK, one in 100 people have the condition, but shockingly it's thought that only one in 400 are actually diagnosed. So that means a massive 75% of celiacs don't even know they have it. But there have been improvements in diagnosis in recent decades. Over the last 20 years, there's been a fourfold increase in the rate of celiac diagnosis. But that's led some scientists to wonder, is celiac disease becoming more common?
Professor Sanders says that it's partly due to better recognition of celiac disease that we've seen an increase in its prevalence. However, there are some other possible explanations, like a study in Finland which said autoimmune conditions are a consequence of a modern environment. So what they're suggesting is that we're living in a more and more sterile environment and so our immune system is effectively bored, so it turns in on itself. We are now seeing celiac disease in the Indian subcontinent and in China as they adopt a westernized diet and have more wheat in their diet. It's now evolving there. So the world's changing. So I've learned that there's a big diagnosis problem with celiac disease and the condition involves cutting out gluten. But how do my fellow celiacs find living with it? Well, it's not as simple as just cutting out bread, pasta and cake. That's because even a crumb of gluten can damage a celiac inside, even if they're not really sensitive. Um, and a spoon as well for the jam. Oh yeah, don't go getting any crumbs in that. Jessica Marples is a 27-year-old celiac from rugby who lives with her non-celiac boyfriend. She explained what precautions she takes to avoid being glutened. Even things... Like, oh, I can't use the toaster anymore. Having to have separate butters or jams just because the risk of one of them sticking a spoon or a knife in. It probably is the first thing that I felt real anxiety over and really did make me worry at the time. This is a problem called cross-contamination. So just like when you handle chicken, you try to avoid getting salmonella, celiacs have to be extra careful of how gluten could accidentally make it into their meals. Nowadays, a lot of places serve gluten-free food, like Burton Road Chippy in Lincoln. But cross-contamination is still a big danger, and celiacs Jessica and Charlotte explained to me that it can create a lot of worries. It really does bring fear onto you when you know the consequences that if you don't follow the gluten-free diet, what could happen. I really do struggle with it and when I when I get myself into those feelings and emotions I'm just like why why is this happening and I just feel like why can't I just live normal like this is just unfair and I've got to live with this forever. These dark days can make it hard to live with celiac disease. As Jessica and Charlotte said sometimes I really get down about not feeling normal. And that's where Celiac UK can help. They aim to support celiacs in their everyday lives and increase awareness about the condition. And that woman says it's really important the charity exists. We really know what it's like to live gluten-free every day. So wherever somebody is in their gluten-free journey, our community is the place to be. Our resources will help. Um, every day for every occasion. So we can help people make safe food choices more easily and we're just all working together so that no life is limited by gluten. The charity also accredit restaurants that are safe to eat at and in May run an awareness week. But I still get the feeling, even with restaurants serving gluten-free food and Celiac UK running an awareness week, that I just wish I could go back to living without celiac disease. At the moment, this condition's only treatment is a lifelong gluten-free diet. And I sometimes wonder, am I, Jessica and Charlotte, destined to worry about what we eat for the rest of our lives? Or could there be some kind of miracle cure? We've seen lots of vaccines produced for COVID-19. So with the right research, could there ever be a jab for celiac disease? Gastroenterologist Professor David Sanders has been working on the autoimmune disease for three decades and says he isn't optimistic about a cure working. I will be very surprised if I see something that actually you just go and give everybody and suddenly they don't have celiac disease, I will be amazed. The patient certainly wants something. Whether we will ever be able to deliver it, I don't know. So it looks like celiac disease is here to stay along with lifelong diets of gluten-free food. Or maybe not. What if we could reprogram the body to tolerate gluten again? That's exactly what a recent American study has tried to do. 
Now you might remember that in the Trojan War, the Greeks used a wooden horse to sneak soldiers into Troy. <laughs> Welcoming the seemingly safe horse into their city, the Trojans were then attacked by the soldiers and overthrown. Now, that same Trojan horse technique is what's being used to potentially cure celiac disease. Through injection, a new nanoparticle technology is put into the body containing an antigen, such as gliadin, which is a part of gluten. T cells in the body then turn off the normal immune response in celiacs to gluten because they think the nanoparticles are safe, sort of like the soldiers being let in inside the horse. These nanoparticles were tested in a two-week gluten trial of around 30 people, and Professor Stephen Miller of the Northwestern University in Chicago says the results were promising. The TAC-101 tolerogenic particles reduced the immune response by almost 90%. We prevented both the immune response that causes the small bowel damage and the small bowel damage that normally occurs in patients upon exposure to gluten. I think there's, there's great hope. I'm very confident in it because of this very profound initial success. Professor Miller calls the treatment a tolerogenic vaccine and says further larger trials will now be completed to answer questions such as how long does this tolerization last? If everything goes well, then Professor Miller says the trials could be completed within several years. And crucially, it's not just celiac disease which could benefit from this technology. The beauty of the whole system is that these nanoparticles simply by switching the protein antigen that you encapsulate inside are theoretically capable of treating any autoimmune disease. If we could stop autoimmune disease in a permanent and specific fashion, this would be a huge finding. You know, I have every confidence that it's going to be. Potentially, this could be a real game changer. So that means other autoimmune conditions like diabetes or multiple sclerosis, which currently can't be cured, in theory, could use this tolerogenic vaccine. Now Charlotte, you and I know how hard it is to live with celiac disease. If you one day could eat gluten again, how much would that mean to you? It would make me so happy, like so happy beyond words to know that I can go out and not worry about what I'm eating and I'd feel normal again and I'd not feel isolated from anyone ever again. It would be the best thing ever. It really would. At the moment, though, it is still a dream, as we look for a way to solve the worries of celiacs. A life without checking labels, cross-contamination, and free from aisles is at least a few years away, if Professor Miller's trials go as well as he hopes. But the UK currently has a big diagnosis problem, so for now, it's most important to improve awareness about celiac disease. With three in four celiacs unaware they even have the condition, Celiac UK launched the Is It Celiac Disease campaign in 2015. And Professor Sanders urged those with symptoms to seek medical advice. Certainly not changing your diet, that's really important. You know, gluten-free has a lot of pull. And actually, if people say that they have symptoms when they eat gluten, they have about a one in 10 chance of having celiac disease. So please don't make a change to your diet. Don't go gluten-free. First, find out what's wrong with you. Do you have celiac disease? So like Professor Sanders said, it's important not to self-diagnose. So if you think you might have some of the symptoms mentioned in this documentary, go to your GP or find out more information on the Celiac UK website. It might be that you need to be gluten-free, just like me.